action we're going to Kakoura what is up everybody and welcome back to another video for those of you who don't know me my name is Megan and I'm a travel vlogger I've been lucky enough to travel to over 22 countries so far so today by the title we're going to be talking about the beautiful little seaside town of Kaikoura <music> So to start off with, a little bit of history about Kaikoura. Basically in 2016, a 7.8 magnitude earthquake hit Kaikoura and it caused huge devastations, railway lines and roads. The town was pretty much cut off from everything in 2016. Luckily enough, jumping five years on, 2021, this little town has rebuilt itself and it is more charming than ever. Now we're going to jump straight into it and the first thing that I recommend is basically trying the local crayfish. So kai means food and kora means crayfish. So by the name kai kora, it is the best place to try fresh crayfish. Now there's heaps of options to choose from. There's ones in the actual town itself or there's lots of little roadside ones when you're driving by and it will say fresh crayfish, buy here. But one of the places that I recommend that I got told about was basically a barbecue place. Now it's called like Best Barbecues and you basically drive around towards the Kaikoura Peninsula. It's about a five to 10 minute drive outside of Kaikoura. And it's basically just this family owned little basically shack on the side of the road in like a wee van thing. And they just cook it up on the grill completely fresh. The sea is literally behind so it's almost like it comes from the sea onto your plate. It is amazing. Now it is a little bit pricey because obviously crayfish is very very pricey but you're looking at anything between around 40 to up to 75 dollars for like a crayfish tail but again it is the freshest crayfish you are probably ever going to get in New Zealand itself. The crayfish is so good. I definitely recommend even if you don't like crayfish or you haven't tried it, try it again because I tried crayfish a long time ago. I didn't like it and I tried it again in Kaikoura and ha. Oh, I was literally blown away. It was so delicious. So definitely try the crayfish. Next thing I'd recommend is basically just wandering around the town and going to the local Kaikoura Museum. As I mentioned before, there's a lot of history in Kaikoura, especially from the 2016 earthquake, but it is good to know exactly what happened in Kaikoura and the museum is a great place to do that. Now it's a $12 entry to get in and it took myself and Anna around an hour to two hours to go through, depending on how interested you are in the history. And there's some interactive things there as well. There's a few videos and a few things to touch. Like for example, you can touch the seal skin. So I actually thought looking at seals, they were gonna be quite tough but when you touch their fur they're actually extremely soft and you can learn about why their fur is that way so it's a great place for kids especially so the Kaikoura Museum is definitely a good one to go and see also just checking out the beautiful little town there's so many little kiosks they've basically made kind of like a little container mall in a way obviously it's not covered it's outside but it's just these containers there's this little place called the bee box you've got artists you've got Kaikoura homemade gifts you've got clothes clothing stores. It's a really cute little place just to wander around, especially on a sunny day. We were so lucky with our weather, so I definitely recommend just walking through the town as well. A great place to eat as well would be the Strawberry Tree. It's basically a pub. They do really good food as well, and they also have live music on as well. <laughs> Another place that we went to was a cafe called Flow. They do the most amazing breakfast, Eggs Benedict, the full English breakfast. So I definitely recommend going there and trying out their food as well. Next up is the Dusky Dolphins. Now you can do a range of tours with the Dusky Dolphins, but who doesn't love dolphins? And the Duskies are some of the most acrobatic and the most playful dolphins I have ever come across. Now, there's a few options. You can swim with the Dusky Dolphins, which is going to cost you around $200, and the whole experience takes around 90 minutes. Or you can do what I did and Anna did, and that was basically go on a watch option. This was $100, and this took around two hours, and you basically go out in the boat with the swimmers, but you're just obviously watch only, and you get to see them do flips in the air and basically show off to you basically for like a whole 90 minutes. They are just the most adorable dolphins. You can also cut 
kayak with them. That's $65 for an hour. So there's a whole range of options, but just see the dolphins. You can even just go to the beach and you can see them jumping in the air, flipping, and they come in pods of about 50 to 100. So you're pretty much guaranteed every time you go out, you're gonna see some. Next up, we are going whale watching. Now it's a little bit pricey at $185 per person, but that's for a three hour experience. Now I have mentioned this site before, it is called Book Me. Now Book Me is a great site to get discounts on, so we managed to get this for $135 per person. So I definitely recommend if you haven't seen Book Me, it is a New Zealand site and it will just help you save money and get you discounts. Now when you first hop on the boat, they explain to you basically why Kaikoura is a good place to see whales. Now it's because there's something called the shelf. Now underneath the ocean, it kind of keeps going flat like this and it just completely drops off. And what happens is basically all this food gets stuck on the shelf. So a lot of the animals passing through stop in Kaikoura to feed and just to basically take advantage of that shelf. So Kaikoura is known for humpback whales and the sperm whales and even orcas at certain times of the year. But what we were hunting for today was the sperm whale, which is the most common in Kaikoura. The captain and the crew are so knowledgeable, they give you all the information you need, and seeing these whales is completely natural. They are not tagged, they are not tracked, it is all completely natural, which I think is an amazing way to see these beautiful animals. Our Captain Shannon chucked a hydrophone into the water and was basically listening for these whale clicks. Basically like the clicking of the fingers, the communication so that we could go to their location. The boat kind of pulls up behind them and then you just sit and you watch and you admire these beautiful animals. And it was just such a surreal experience. We were looking at the biggest animal in the ocean. We were just watching it breathe out of its blowhole and when it dove back down and we saw the tail come up, it was just one of the most amazing experiences. You almost feel a little bit emotional because there's a lot of attractions these days that, you know, you go to aquariums and you see these animals, but it's not the same. Like, just to see them in their natural habitat, so peaceful and... I highly, highly, highly recommend whale watching. Like, it is such a great thing to do. Next up, we are going to the seal colony, and it's also known as the Peninsula Walk. So the Peninsula Walk is actually a three to four hour walk that you can do around the whole peninsula. It is absolutely beautiful, but what is there as well is the seal colonies. Now, the seals are just the cutest I have ever seen. They are now officially Anna's favorite animal. So from the car park, you park up. Parking is entirely free. It's about a five to 10 minute drive from Kaikoura itself. Make sure you wear good footwear as well because you'll be clambering along the rocks a bit as well. It's about a 10 to 15 minute walk to the first seal colony and when you get there, you will not be disappointed. There is around 50 to 100 seals basking in the sun on the rocks with their fat little blubber, just literally like <sighs> And that is literally what the seals do pretty much the majority of the time until they get too hot and then they need to go in the water to cool down. Just to see these animals just all lying on the rocks is a pretty cool experience. Now I do recommend walking around to the second or the third seal colony because the first one is where everyone goes. There's a lot of people, it's quite touristy, there's a lot of people taking pictures and a lot of people making a lot of noise as well. So definitely walk around another 20 minutes to half an hour to the second seal colony where it's a bit more private and you can literally just sit down and just watch these beautiful animals. The walk itself is absolutely stunning. Myself and Anna did the whole walk and it was just beautiful. You've got the seals, you've got the rocks, you've got the sea. You've just got this beautiful peninsula that you're walking around and the views are stunning everywhere you look. Now the seal colony is entirely free and we love free activities. It's great for the kids, but obviously just wear good footwear while you're there. So these are my top things to do in Kaikoura. Leave a comment down below if you think I've missed something out. But I hope this helped you on your trip to Kaikoura. As always, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you next week. Bye!